Hi, I'm Margot, and I joined a club I did not want to join, the Cancer Club. And if you have had a cancer scare or been diagnosed yourself, you might feel the same way. And your journey starts with just the twinkle of a could it be possible when you have a symptom or a some little sign that gets you to start to think about it and you think, Psh, no, not me. You know, I live healthy. I don't smoke. I'm not a man. You know, bladder cancer is an older male smoker disease, right? Wrong. So for me, the journey started with a little bit of blood in my urine. And I called my gynecologist who said, you should go pee in a cup and find out if you have a UTI. That's my dog. There she is. <laughs> and that's Casey. And the test came back negative for bacteria. There was no bacteria. And I thought, I don't think that's right. I've had never, never had blood in my urine, didn't have a UTI. I had some uh, bladder infections when I was a little girl. So I thought maybe I should have this looked at and fool around. So that day I got a recommendation for uh, a urologist and I went to see the urologist as soon as they could uh, see me, which was a couple of weeks later. Um, told him everything. He said, yep, we're going to need to do a cystoscopy. So that's really not a fun thing to do, but yeah, let's have a look. I didn't want to stick my head in the ground. I know what can happen if you don't find out what's really going on. But I still didn't think really that's what this was. Um, then I had the cystoscopy. No, first I had the MRI or the CAT scan, whatever that thing is called. You get in the tube and it takes pictures of you. Um, and as soon as I got the report back, I read through the report and it didn't mention anything about tumors. And I thought, great, I'm good to go. I do not have cancer. And this is during Christmas time and my kids are in college and they're coming home, family's coming in. That was like the 17th of December. And then the cystoscopy was still scheduled for the 27th, actually the day before my birthday. And so once I saw that the report was good and glowing, I called the urologist and said, so I guess we don't need to do the cystoscopy. And he goes, no, you, you need to do that. You can see things on the cystoscopy that don't show up on an MRI or CT scan. So when we did the cystoscopy on the 27th, he said he saw a lesion, is what he called it, soft pedaling it nicely, and then he wanted to have it removed. And that was scheduled for the soonest that could be done was January 10th. Uh, as of now, it is March 8th. That came back as stage one, high grade, aggressive bladder cancer. Could not believe it. That was on January 16th. So by now, my kids have gone back to college. And this is my other dog. My little senior citizen dog. Hello. <laughs> Two girls. Not even, not even two months ago. And uh, I went and got a second opinion. And the second opinion through second MD um, said, well, you never know. 20 to 30% of stage one bladder cancer is actually stage two. And if you're going to be doing the BCG treatment, it's not going to help if you're actually stage two. So go have another uh, transurethral resection done. Um, check and see if all the tumor was removed. And also do a blue light uh, cystoscopy, which is fancy and new. And only a handful of people in my state of Texas uh, do it. So I found somebody who did. They, are, they were at MD Anderson, and that's what got me to MD Anderson which is three hours away for me. Fortunately, it's close-ish. And so that's what we went for, and that appointment was, you guys, Tuesday, less than a week ago today, Sunday, March 8th. So Tuesday on March 3rd, is that right? Yes. Third, yes, Tuesday, March 3rd, we had our appointments. And I don't know if you've been to MD Anderson or one of the big cancer hospitals, but it is like, stepping into an alternate universe where 
the names and the words and everything is different, like a new language. Don't know any of these words. Don't know about stomas and cystatins and plasmacytoids and I don't, none of that. The behavior's different. There's, there's how do you check in? There's how do you, do, it's just like a whole nother world. Uh, and you're just looking around in amazement, but not in a good way. Not like I've stepped into Disney World, the happiest place on earth. I've stepped into Cancer World. This is not the happiest place on earth. And I don't, I don't want to be here. I want to be back in Austin. But it's life-threatening, right? So we had the appointment with uh, Dr. Kamat, who's amazing. Um, and he said, yeah, we looked at the same slides that um, your pathologist looked at in Austin. We looked at the same 22 slides from your um, pathology, I guess the from the, yeah, the pathology uh, report. He said, but we saw something that uh, the locals did not. We saw this very rare additional form of cancer called plasma cytoid. And it is so rare, it's in the 1%, we see it 1% of the time great. This is not the 1% club I wanted to join. I want to be, I like to be the 1% with, you know, like really nice boats and house and, you know, lifestyle. That's the 1% I was sort of going for. Uh, but instead I got this 1%. At any rate, uh, that is very deadly. And he told me, you cannot keep your bladder. Well, you can, if you kept it, you have 12 months to 18 months just, I just turned 57. I'm healthy. I'm active. I have 19 year old and 21 year old kids. I have a new husband of three years. I have these great dogs you've already met. I, what? It just doesn't sink in, but you, you keep listening. And, and then finally he tells you that what you have to do is have your bladder removed and probably chemo before that. And maybe a trial. Just shock is really the best way to describe it. So that was Tuesday. Wednesday, I had the resection done, scheduled for two o'clock. Takes forever because, you know, they take the time they need to so that when it's your turn, they take the time with you. So hard to wait. It's just my life. That's all. It's only my life on the line. No big deal. Anyway, the, the surgery finally happened at four and he did see something. He said his eye said, it does not look like cancer. Uh, and now we're waiting to find out if I qualify to participate in a trial that involves chemotherapy and immunotherapy. The immunotherapy is apparently, um, I'm getting a little upset thinking about it, is, um, is approved for treating some forms of cancer, but not the kind I have. And um, so I find out tomorrow, Monday, with my appointment uh, with my oncologist at MD Anderson on a phone call if I qualify for that. If the structure and how deep my cancer went qualifies me for that trial. And if I get that trial, if I qualify, then I have a 50-50 chance of receiving immunotherapy with chemo. I will definitely get chemo. It's a double-blind study, so I won't know. If I don't qualify, then I take a path of chemo, eight weeks of chemo, then a break, and then they remove my bladder. And then I have a pouch on the outside. This is not what I had in mind. <laughs> Nobody does. I've seen videos of people talking about how they can live a perfectly normal and healthy life. I am not there. I am not in the place where I accept or embrace that. I want to, but this is a lot of heavy stuff to sink in. I went to that appointment on Tuesday less than a week ago thinking, Great. We just, we're just finding out if it's stage one or two and whether we do this treatment regimen or that one. But instead I found out I have an even deadlier cancer that had I not, they usually don't see what they said is they usually don't see people with this deadly, super rare form of cancer this early. Usually it's later and when it's later, they can't do anything. So that's the part where I'm working on feeling lucky. But it's all so much to take in that uh, lucky is not how I'm feeling yet. That's the goal. I feel lucky for some other things, the love and support of my family and my friends. 
the encouragement and having access to the best doctors in the world, I'm working on it. So this is my bladder cancer journey. I didn't want to call this survivor or fighter because we all fight and we all survive to differing degrees. And I don't know what the future brings. I, I don't know. But if I can help other women or men get through this journey, then I am happy to do that. If there's something good that can come out of this, then I want to share it with you. So chemo, don't know if I'm going to lose all the hair. I have long hair. It's in a bun right now. Some of the hair, none of the hair. If I do immunotherapy, then maybe it only thins. Um, but I don't know. If we do chemotherapy, I probably lose it all. So I'm kind of glad that, I don't know, that you can see my silver. I'm, I'm glad I didn't spend a couple hundred dollars uh, regilding it. <laughs> Just going to fall out. Um, find out tomorrow, Monday. I'll do another video update. Then I have an echocardiogram on Friday, the 13th, uh, to make sure I'm strong enough for chemo. And then all the fun starts the week after, I believe. Okay. So here's enjoying what there is to enjoy about this very moment. And thank you for checking in on this journey with me.